Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and this is part two in the graph of the cosine function. In the first video on the graph of the cosine function, I talked about how the value of A transformed the shape of the graph. I talked about how the value of B transformed the graph. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how C transforms the graph. Just as a quick review, we used these cosine values to graph one cycle of our function cos x. In that video and in the video on sine graphs, we've talked about how to define amplitude, the period of the function, and the period of the function refers to the length along the x-axis that it takes for the curve to go through a complete cycle before it starts repeating. The increments, which is a technique I use in doing these graphs. And now we're going to take a look at displacement. So we did talk about displacement with sine functions. So again, if you need, you can go back and look at the graph of the sine function videos first. But let's move into how C affects the transformation of the graph as well as B and A. In our first example, we have y equals cos of, in bracket, x plus pi, end of bracket. So A is equal to 1. B is equal to 1. And C is equal to pi. We use these values to determine these four characteristics about our graph. So the amplitude will be equal to 1. The period will equal 2 pi divided by 1, which is just 2 pi. Therefore, the increments will be 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi over 2. And now to find the displacement, it's going to be negative C over B, which is 1, so just negative pi. So the displacement tells me where to start my cosine function, and then I will use the increments to get the subsequent values on my graph. If the displacement is negative pi, that's this value here. I know that um, the period is 2 pi, which means the increments are pi over 2. So my next key values will increase by a value of pi over 2. If I have negative pi and I add an increment of pi over 2, negative, I need a common denominator, so negative pi will be negative 2 pi over 2 plus pi over 2, which will be negative pi over 2. So that's my next key x value. Then I add pi over 2 to get the next key x value, and that will be 0. I add pi over 2 again, and I add pi over 2 one more time. So pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. That gives me a period of 2 pi, and those are my five key x values. I know that my maximum y value is 1 and the minimum y value is negative 1 because a in this example is 1. And my cos curve starts at 1, 0 here, negative 1 here, 0 here, and 1 here. So if I connect those dots in as smooth a curve as I can, that's what my cosine function will look like when we have a, have a displacement over negative pi units. It's the same curve, it's just displaced. Let's take a look at some more examples. In my next example, y equals cos of in brackets 1 half x plus pi over 2. a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1 half, and c is equal to pi over 2. I use these values in calculating these quantities. So the amplitude is 1, the period is 2 pi divided by b, which is 1 half, so the, the period will be 4 pi. 
The increments will be this value, the period divided by four. So we have increments of pi. And the displacement will be negative c, so negative pi over two, divided by b, which is one half. Dividing by one half is like multiplying by two. So if I have negative pi over two times two, that will equal negative pi. So negative pi tells me where my cosine function or graph starts. That's right here. To find my next key x values, I keep adding pi. So if I add pi to here, I get zero. Add pi to zero, I get pi. 2 pi, and 3 pi. So there's my five key values. A is 1, so my maximum and minimum y values are 1 and negative 1. And now I just complete my post curve. So that's what that graph will look like. Let's try some more. In our next example, we have y equals 2 times the cos of, and in brackets, 2 pi x minus pi. So let's define a, b, and c. a is 2, b is 2 pi, and c is negative pi. Now let's calculate these values. Amplitude is the absolute value of 2. The period is 2 pi divided by b, which is 2 pi, so that's 1. Increments are the period divided by 4, so 1 quarter. And the displacement will be negative c, so negative negative pi, divided by b, which is 2 pi. The negatives will become positive, the pi's will cancel. So I will have a displacement of positive one half. So I start with my displacement. That's going to be my first x value, which will be one half. And then I find my next four x values using my increment. So I add one quarter. So one half plus one quarter will be three quarters. I add one quarter again, I get one. I add one quarter again, and I'll get five quarters. And I add one quarter again, which will be six quarters, or three halves. Does this give me a distance equal to one? Yes, it does. And increments of one half. My a is two, so my maximum y value is positive two, my minimum is negative two. Then I just plot my points, my cos function. And there's your graph of this function. So with this technique, it, it looks pretty intimidating when you see it looking like this, but just go through these steps, identify a, b, and c. From that, you can determine these values. That tells you where to start, the x value, where to start your graph, and then add your increments four times to get your next four key values for x, and then plot your curve. Notice that I'm just doing one cycle of the graph. If you're required to do more, then I mean, you're gonna to have to continue it to the left and to the right. I just wanna do one more example where A is negative. So let's take a look at that. Our last example is Y equals negative cos of three X minus pi over three. I start off identifying A, B, and C. So A is negative one, B is three, and c is negative pi over 3. Once I have those values, then I can complete those values. So amplitude is the absolute value of negative 1, so it's 1. Period is 2 pi divided by b, so 2 pi over 3. Increments is the period divided by 4, which would be 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. And then the displacement will be negative c, so negative, negative pi over 3, divided by b, which is 3. 
So that will be positive pi over 9. With these, <laughs> some of these questions, you're going to have to be fairly competent with fractions. So displacement tells me the x value where my cos curve starts. So it's going to be positive pi over 9. Then I'm going to add pi over 6 to get my next x point and so on. So pi over 9 plus pi over 6, where you need a common denominator, our common denominator is going to be 18. So that's going to be 2 pi over 18 plus 3 pi over 18, which is 5 pi over 18. We add pi over 6 again, which is like another 3 pi over 18, which gives me 8 pi over 18, which can reduce to 4 pi over 9. We add pi over 6 again, which is 3 pi over 18. So 8 plus 3, 11 pi over 18. And then this will be 14 pi over 18, which can reduce to 7 pi over 9. So here's my starting x point, here's my end x point. Does that give me a period of 2 pi over 3? If I subtract, I'm going to get 6 pi over 9, which is definitely uh, 2 pi over 3. Now, I have a negative here, and it's a 1. So normally I would start at 1, and my cos function would like, like, look like this if that was positive 1, but because it's negative 1, it's going to start here. Then it would be 0 here, it would be positive 1 here, 0 here, and negative 1 here. So basically the cosine function just got flipped over the x-axis. So instead of looking like this, we'll just flip it and it looks like that. So I've covered the transformations that you may see when you're dealing with the graphs of the sine function and the cosine function. I'm now going to move on to other uh, trig topics in my next videos, so when you're ready, check them out. Take care and see you then.